Hello, my dear students. Welcome back to the lecture. So in this lecture, we'll try to see certain basic terms in the bridge engineering. Okay. The first is about the clear span. What is clear span? It's a clear distance between any two adjacent support in a bridge is called as a clear span. I'll show you this through an image, but just now understand the technical terms. Next, something called as effective span. The center to center distance between any two adjacent support, we call it as a effective. When I say effective, it is from center to center. And when I say clear span, it is from between any two support that is from outer to outer. So to put it in a better way, let me show it here. Okay. Now, when I say I'm speaking of clear span, it means that from this outer to this outer, this is my clear span. And if I say something as effective span, then it is from the center of this, that is center of this sphere to the center of this. So this is my effective span and this is my clear span. Got it? Yeah. After that, the next... The next one is called as headroom. It is a vertical distance between the highest point of a vessel or a vehicle and the lowest point of any protruding member of the bridge. That means uh, usually, uh, say if it is a if, if it was vehicle and uh, vehicular underpass bridge and all, we had seen it here, right? Let me go back to one of the bridge. Yeah, somewhere here. So if I show you, okay, I'll go back and go back. Let us say if this is a bridge, okay? So the vehicle is going to pass through that. Whatever is the highest point of the vehicle, from there to the lowest point is called as, yeah, it's called as headroom. That means, so if I put it in this way, from this point to this point, that is a vertical distance from the highest point, okay? That I can consider this as my highest point or maybe the highest point of the vehicle, okay? From there to this point, whatever I have, no? So that is called as my vertical distance okay or i mean that is called as my headroom okay this this vertical distance is called as my headroom got it so after that next is we have length of the bridge the bridge structure's length will be taken as an overall length measured along the center line of the bridge from the end to end of the bridge for example if i consider this to be my bridge okay i don't have a complete bridge here but let us consider the end point is somewhere here for the bridge from this end to this end whatever the total length we have no that is called as the or a length of the bridge or call it as, or it is called as a length of the bridge. Next, we have low water level. The level of a water surface in a river during the dry season is called as low water level. Now, this is not a dry season. It, now, this photo was taken at the time of monsoon. Okay. Now, let us say uh, if, there, if, it is not a, if it was not a rainy season and whatever the lowest level of water I have, no? so that is called as LW, that is lowest water level. Okay. Now, it is not a monsoon season. Whenever this entire water will get dry up, whatever lowest point we have, no? so that is called as LW, that is called as lower, uh, lowest water level, got it? After that, we have something called as highest flood level, which is called as H HFL. The highest water level ever recorded during a flood in a river or a stream is called as HFL. Now, for example, maybe this bridge was constructed for around, let us say, 15 to 20 years. Now, in any one point of a day, okay, due to the excess rain and due to the excess flood, this water might have this water might have rise somewhere here. Let us consider the water might have rise somewhere here, somewhere at this point. Let us say, okay. Now this becomes my highest flood level of this particular bridge. Got it? Right now the water is here, isn't it? Right now water is here. Maybe when it uh, started to rain excessive, uh, okay, and then the water level is going to increase. So that is called as my highest flood level. After that, next one what we have is a apron. It is a layer of a concrete mass and stone, etc which is placed at the entrance of the outlet of a culvert or waterway to prevent the scouring. So I don't have an exact image for that. But what is this scouring? See, what, what happens whenever you are constructing a bridge and all, you'll be having a lot of soil in this area, isn't it? You can see a lot of soil here, soil in that area. So if you don't provide an apron there, apron is like a protective layer what you provide. With the help of stones, you try to uh, create a kind of a barrier so that due to the flow of a water, whatever soil is there, no, it will be not washed out with the water. If you don't do this apron, what will happen? If you don't do that, the scouring is going to happen. That means whatever soil particles are there, what will happen? It will wash away with the water. And if the soil particles wash away with the water, what will happen? A kind of a depression is created. Because of that, again, what will happen? There will be a settlement here because of that. Again, erosion and all is going to happen. In order to take care of that, we do a kind of a pitching with the help of a stone so that when the flow of water happens, 
it will go over the stone or over the apron and whatever soil is there in the nearby abutment areas and all this area it will be not not washed away so that is why we provide apron okay next is called as abutment the end support of a superstructure of a bridge is called as abutment now for example you can see this is the end right from here the road will be connected and your bridge is going to start so this is my abutment so this is the end portion whereas the interior portion like this one all these are called as in all these are called as piers now the end support of a superstructure of a bridge is called as abutment it may be either flat or arch shape they transmit the load from the superstructure of the bridge to the foundation now whatever load come from the superstructure it will be transferred through the abutment and this is my uh, raft foundation what i have put i'll be explaining you the entire sequence of this particular bridge it's a deck slab bridge in the upcoming lectures okay so this much is understood so most of the concept most of the technical terms we have understood next we'll try to see what is flex and what is approach slab so that it will act as a base for all our future videos next is something called as flex the rise in the water level of a river near the bridge over the flood level due to the construction of the pier is called as flex for example see we are constructing a bridge here isn't it we have created a road a barrier here and this water we are not allowed to stay here now let us consider once the entire bridge is constructed whatever water level we have no so again all these things will be removed okay so that what will happen this water from this particular river is going to come here so since you have created lot of piers here it is a kind of barrier so because of that what will happen because of that now let us say the water level from here is some somewhere here okay initially now since because of this barrier what will happen because of this pier and all this water level is going to rise okay why because so much of inflow is happening but whatever the water should go you have created a barrier because of that the water level is going to rise so that is why it's written the raise in the water level of the river near the bridge over the flood level due to the construction of the pier is called as efflux so that rise whatever you have no so the green was the original level of this particular river due to the pier it got increased because the area got decreased the flow was the same flow so because of that the rise will happen so this is called as my efflux okay yeah. next is called as approach slab so what is approach slab the slab provided to join the approach road with the bridge is known as approach slab the thickness is usually 150 mm and it is 3500 mm now for example you see here this is a bridge what we had constructed okay so this the bridge is constructed up to here uh, where can i show you that yeah so the bridge was constructed up to this area okay this was where the bridge got end now we create this much area as my approach slab so this much area we create approach slab i'll show you how the approach slab will be done and all okay now you can see here the same thing this is where the bridge ended okay the deck slab and all ended here now after this what we did we created a we created a approach slab so this is my approach slab okay first we have put a pcc okay after the pcc i'm going to do the concreting of this okay the pcc thickness is 150 so this you can see here this is a pcc then we'll put a shuttering in this way and we'll be creating a slab and the height of this slab will be matching the deck slab here okay and what is what is the width of this this width whatever we have no this width yeah so not this width this width whatever we have right this width so it is 3500 mm or 3.5 meter okay so this is how that deck slab this is how that approach slab will be constructed why the approach slab has to be constructed the reason is that we constructed our bridge up to here after this whatever soil we have no in this portion it is all a backfilled soil so once a vehicle start to pass through this if you don't create a uh, solid structure or if you don't create a solid um, uh, what you call a platform over there due to the movement of the vehicle you see the vehicle is moving right it is going to create a pressure because of that what will happen again the settlement is going to happen so i don't want that to happen so what we create we create a kind of a slab here which is called as approach slab so through this approach slab you will your car is going to come like that means your vehicle is going to come and through here it is going to take the bridge so hence it is called as approach slab got it yeah now we'll see it here about this uh, the same point about the flex see this is my upstream side okay from where the water is coming and this is my downstream side through which the water is going okay and let us say this is a pier what you are constructed this is a pier what you are constructed so this was the flow of your water initially so by the time by the time your water reached to the pier level where I, what has what has happened this is a rise you can see this rise so this rise is called as efflux got it the same thing i explained you through this image through this image i had explained you got it right so last another two three terms are there next is about the carriage width what is this carriage uh, width the minimum clear width of a roadway is called as carriage width see we have constructed the bridge now you can see the vehicle passing isn't it 
Now, whatever width we have from here to here, from here to here, whatever width we have, it is called as my carriage width. Generally, for a single lane bridge, this is a single lane bridge. The minimum carriage width should be 4.25 meters. So this should be 4.25 meters. And if you're putting a double lane, along with that, if you put one more lane where the width will be more, in that case, you can go with a 7.5 meter. That is from here to here, it will be 7.5 meter. Right now, it is for a single lane. So it is 4.25 meter. Got it? Okay. So this is called as carriage width. Next is pier. So it is a, it is an intermediate support of a multi-span bridge. Its height is kept equal to the abutment. That means, see, this is the end portion, isn't it? So this is my abutment. Okay, you cannot see it here. It is behind this. But whereas this, 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 and this are my intermediate. So we call them as a pier. It is an intermediate support of a multi-span bridge. So it's a multi-span span bridge. So what, what is the height of this? The height of this will be equal to the height of the abutment. You cannot keep your abutment this level and pier this level. The both should be of same height. Only then you're going to get a uniform surface through which the deck slab will come. Got it? So this is called as my pier. Next, something called as wing wall. So what is this wing wall? It's a retaining wall constructed to retain the earthwork of an approach embankment behind the abutments. They provide a smooth entry into the bridge site and they may be a straight wing wall and a return wing wall. You can see this is a bridge what I constructed. You can see a kind of a wall what I've constructed here. So this is a wing wall. Why it has been constructed? If you don't construct, when you do the backfilling, you have filled the soil back, isn't it? That soil will fall here again. So in order to... Uh, give a protective uh, layer what we construct we construct uh, a, a kind of a structure here which is called as wing wall okay it is constructed here similarly yeah here also you can see see here if i don't construct what will happen again all the soil and all will fall in this way area okay that is why what we have done we have constructed this particular area is it so this is called as my wing wall in the same way, we have different wing wall based on the requirement. So this is called a splayed wing wall. It's created in the angle. You can see this is a kind of a culvert what we have done. And you can see how inclined we have done this wall. Okay. Again, this is called as a butterfly wing wall. And here also we have created a wing wall. Okay. Got it. Uh, and also along the, uh, this wing wall will also help you in a smooth entry into the bridge side. Like if you're making an entry from here, no. Okay, sometimes this will be created in this direction also. So in this way, what will happen? It will give you a, a smooth entry into the bridge side. Got it? Yeah. So next is about the bearings. Now, what exactly is this bearings? It's a device fixed on the abutment and pier to allow for the free expansion, contraction and deflection of the bridge structure are known as bridge bearings. So you can see it here. This is a pier cap what we have. And over that we have uh, put um, a girder that is I-shaped girder. And you can see one, two, three here. This is called as bearings. You can see here, here it is called as bearing. So why it is provided? They are the fixed devices. They are put on the abutment and pier to allow for the free expansion, contraction, and deflection of the bridge structure. So if you have, if you have seen your vehicle, uh, there's something called as a shock absorber, right? So whenever you put apply a brake or whenever you get into the potholes, what will happen? You will not feel that jerk, isn't it? Because you have a shock absorber. So this bearings also act like a shock absorber whenever there's a movement of heavy vehicles and all. Due to that, what will happen? There's a vibration and deflection. So because of that, that uh, that particular impact, whatever is created, no, it will be uh, absorbed by this particular bearings and through that, the load is going to pass. So that it will not allow the sudden jerk or sudden force to come on the pier cap. It is going to absorb and then it's going to transfer it to the pier cap. The structure below the bearing is known as substructure. And the portion of the bridge above the bearing is known as superstructure. That means whatever portion we have above this, it is called as my super uh, superstructure. And whatever I have below this, it is called as my uh, substructure. Okay. And then again, the same thing you can see it here. You can see again the bearings and this part. Okay. We'll see. Uh, I'll show you a few other bridges uh, where I've taken a photograph. And for that, we'll see how these uh, bearings will be kept and all. Okay. Yeah, again, the same thing I've written it here. Uh, these are the devices used in the long span bridges. Usually, uh, it is used in the long span bridges. In the culvert and all, we don't use that. Even in the minor bridges, it is not required. In the major bridges, in the RCC, uh, girder type bridges and all, we require these uh, bearings. So these are the devices used in the long span bridge and are provided over the support of the bridge to accommodate the change in the main girder. So this is my main girders, okay? Due to the deflection, temperature, vertical movements, due to the sinking of support, shrinkage, pre-stressing creep, etc. And to transmit the load from the superstructure to the substructure in such a way that bearing stresses induced in the substructure is within the permissible limit. The same thing, whatever load is coming, that will be absorbed, that the shock 
whatever is coming, you know, that will be absorbed by the bearings and then it will be transferred to the uh, substructure. Got it? Yeah. So I hope I was able to uh, explain you most of the technical terms in the bridge engineering, which we have not heard before. And from next lecture onwards, we'll be taking four different bridges and we'll see the sequence of construction for that. So this much technical terms are enough for us so that we have got at least a basic idea. So whenever we uh, see the construction videos, we'll be able to identify all these things. So we'll see you back in the next lecture. Thank you.